Hi, and welcome to another edition of the WGNO Sports Zone. Former Saints quarterback John Forcade is here, and he didn't have to scramble all over the field to get here. John is on deck. But first, the drama surrounding the LSU quarterback situation and why it should not be. It is that time in the fall. The season opener, two and a half weeks away. LSU has to give most of its quarterback reps to the starter and a handful to the backup. It was time for the quarterbacks to make their choices. Once Joe Burrow transferred from Ohio State, the domino effect began. He was going to be the starter. Justin McMillan, a fourth-year junior, had to transfer. Lowell Narcisse could not afford to sit for two more seasons. Narcisse's last action was in a jamboree at St. James in 2016. He needs to play and will this season at a junior college. What is also happening at LSU is this. Ed Ogeron and Steve Ensminger's desire to play a more pro-style offense is becoming self-evident. It's no surprise that the two quarterbacks who departed were dual threat guys. So I don't understand all the hoopla. Burrow was going to be the starter. Miles Brennan wasn't leaving, and McMillan and Narcisse did. The two who left and the timing should not be a surprise to anyone. All right, Mr. Forcade, welcome. Did I get it right? You, you did, and, and the only surprise I see here is they should have saw this coming in the spring and maybe left then and give them an opportunity to start looking this summer to go somewhere, junior college uh, or McMillan, to go play somewhere, another D1 school. But it was written on the wall. When they went and got Burroughs, you figure, well, why would we need another quarterback? We got these, these guys here. They were not happy with Miles Brennan nor were they happy with the backup guys. And they got a chance to go get a Burroughs and, and, and a little, little, little fly on the wall and let you know something. Joe Burroughs' his uncle. Played with you. Played with me at Ole Miss. Johnny Burroughs was the defensive back. So got a little bit of, uh, got a pull for the young man. Well, got a pull for a tiger, a rebel yeah, doing yeah. that. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so Narcisse and McMillan leave. Uh, guys who announced their decision to bail out. Narcisse is a guy who has a lot of ability but hasn't played a lot. What's the biggest thing for him to overcome wherever he goes? Well, I think the big issue with him right now, is Ed, is the fact that he hasn't played since you said 2016 in the Jamboree. And that's high school football. He's off now playing in college football. It's just that step below pro football. There are some good athletes. He's got to get used to playing somehow, some way. And you said he's going to a junior college. What's Perfect the, what's, spot. The, what's the one called? Last, the last U. Yep. Well, I don't think it's going to be there, but I do think it's going to be in Mississippi, probably Gulf Coast Community College. All right, you know Joe Burrow, yeah. at least his family. Family. Buy or sell, are you all in on Joe Burrow or not? No, I, I can't say I'm all in on him because I didn't see much of him at Ohio State. Uh, he, he just got a couple of little bags of chips at what he's done in, in the <laughs> game. I haven't seen much of him. But did you see much more of what Miles Brennan has done. Yes. So let these two guys compete and we'll go with it and see what happens. I think he's going to be okay. They're running a the pro style offense for him. That's what needs to be done with him. Here's the one thing about Miles Brennan that concerned me just watching the spring game, okay? His inability, I think, to find the blitz at times. If you can't do that in the SEC, you're going to get beat up. I watched him twice already play high school football against Brother Martin. He got demolished. Then he played his playoff game his senior year. They were picked to win it all. He looked bad in that game. It's because he doesn't handle pressure. And that's the problem in the SEC. SEC coaches will know this. They got qualified defensive coordinators. They'll go after Brennan. All right, so is that an acquired skill or not, John? You got to get, you got to get in the room. You got to understand. But you got to get some reps, too. And you got to see it at practice. If he's at practice getting his reps at practice and they're understanding that, then give him the shot. But he has to have it on the field. You can't do it in the film room. It has to be on the field for you to be able to read defenses. Former Saints quarterback John Forcade, our guest here for the entire length of the WGNO Sports Zone tonight. Let's go to the Saints. Taysom Hill had a very good preseason game in Jacksonville in the second half of cool of course, two fourth quarter touchdown drives. When you look at Taysom Hill, you see a guy completely different than the Saints' other quarterbacks, plays more like you, running and throwing. Do you think he is the quarterback of the future? I, I saw him at BYU. I liked when I saw him play at BYU. He got hurt. Why did he get hurt? Because he ran quite a bit than most guys. He didn't run to get down. He ran to hurt people. And that's the problem. Get him off special teams. If you think this guy can be your backup quarterback, don't start the preseason game and put him at 
on a special team running now, being on punt block team, get him off of that. If you're going to give him an opportunity to be your backup quarterback, let him learn from the sideline. He's not going to learn running down the field. Somebody could take a shot at him. I would. If I'm thinking this guy's going to be my backup quarterback and running down on kickoffs, I'm going to take a shot at him. All right. Taysom Hill is 27 years old. Buy or sell as the Saints' future? I'm selling that one. You don't I, think so? I, huh? I don't think so. I think, I think, I think, let me tell you something, and I said this the other night. There's a kid named Chad Kelly. Old Pretty Miss good kid, quarterback. Denver Broncos. If I had any opportunity to trade for him, I think this kid can play. Uh, I liked him at Ole Miss. His uncle's legendary. I would go out and get a quarterback. If it's not going to be this season, you better go get somebody next year because Drew Brees has only got a couple years left. And Chad Kelly was the third teamer. Now he's the second teamer yes, moving is. ahead of Paxton Lynch, who's a former number one draft choice. Interesting nugget. Last year's rookie class for the Saints set the bar pretty high. And they're all looking for even better things this season. Here's Karen Loftus with more on Trey Hendrickson, one of the guys getting ready for his second year in the NFL. His rookie season is in the rear view, and now it's time for Saints defensive end Trey Hendrickson to keep trending upward in his second season. Yeah, I mean, I have a great coach in Ryan Nielsen who prepares me really well for anything, you know, and I'm just trying to absorb as much information and be coachable to, you know, get the job done on uh, Sundays. He's got a good grasp as to what we're doing. Um, he's stronger. You know, fortunately right now he's healthy, and you, know, you feel him. There, there's a presence to him, and I, I think that he – in his second year now, knowing what we're doing uh, has begun to do some, I mean, we've seen some really good things in practice, so hopefully that can continue, but he's, uh, he's played well. A key part in his preparation and improvement is taking care of all of the small things, which can add up quickly to an overall better performance on the field. I mean, it's just, you know, focusing on doing my job, you know, a heightened focus on the little things like alignment assignment, just the detailed things are what separates people in this league. Another thing that has separated Hendrickson is the grit and feistiness with which he plays every single down. I try to bring a uh, bit of consistency and a little bit of an edge too. You know, it's just uh, part of why I play and uh, that competitiveness just comes out on the field. There's a physical presence to him and, it, and look, it, it's not necessarily the feistiness. It's how, how a player plays between the whistles and, and you know, can he defend the run, you know, can he affect the passer? Do we consider him a pressure player or not? What are the things that we think he does very well? And, and then let's try to do those things. So I think in year two that he's a guy that's in the mix for definitely for playing. Reporting for the Sports Zone, I'm Karen Loftus. All right, and kickoff of Cardinal Saints at the Dome Friday is 7 o'clock. Have you watched enough of Trey Hendrickson to think that he can be a player. I watched him last season, Ed, and I, I thought he was a guy that when they drafted him, I said, this guy is going to be under the radar. People were talking about the kid from Miami, Muhammad. Uh -uh. I thought this guy here coming from Florida Atlantic was going to be a player. I liked what I saw of him. I like what I saw when I watched him at practice so far. I, I've seen his intensity. He's a player right now. If I had to pick a guy that I would sit there and say, oh, you get Cameron Jordan at your number one Davenport as your draft pick, and you got Sheldon, I'm putting him fourth at the defensive lineman guy I think could play for the Saints, and he's a player. Well, if that's the case, they'll be even better defensively. Okay, with that in mind, Saints wins for the year. What do you say, sir? Uh, you know, you got to look at what happened last year. They were a screwball play away from playing for the championship of the, of the NFC, maybe the Super Bowl. Okay. I got them no worse, 11-5. and five. They could be 12-4 and four if, they, if they keep a number nine healthy. They keep him healthy, 12 and 4 could be what they can do. All right, number nine, of course, 72% of his passes completed last year, and that was a new NFL record. Some of it was short tosses, but okay. his accuracy on a throw like that is amazing. Look, he's 72%. That was 82%, but that was only in, in practice like that. I only had the short warm ups. And this guy's phenomenal. He'll be, what, 39 or maybe 40 years old, I believe, this season? At the end of January. Uh, at the end of, the of January. January. It, it's the things that he does, keeps his body. And he knows now. He doesn't have to throw the deep ball anymore. He's got Kamara. He's got underneath guy. I think they changed the offense up a little bit from, or maybe he's might have changed dead because he's not throwing deep anymore because you we've all seen this happen the last two years. What? INTs. <laughs> Balls thrown under and behind guys. I think he's going to be better this season than he was last year. Okay, so our question was no drop off, and you don't see anything like that coming. I, I don't right? see him dropping off. He's just too good of a ball player. 
takes care of his body. It all depends what Sean Payton thinks what they want to do with it. Don't go deep with him. I know you want players who always want them deep receivers, but in his cases, give him that 15 to 20 yard passing department and let him take it down the field that way. You don't need to go 60, 70 yards. He don't have the arm strength anymore. More with former Saints quarterback John Forcade in a minute. Guest of the WGNO Sports. He is now the most famous 4K to play football. Chase Forcade, son of Keith and Jill, nephew of John, led Rumble to a state title and two dome appearances. And he was named first team all Southland Conference preseason this year. As a junior, Chase Forcade will be the starter at Nichols for the Colonels for the third straight season. You have to be incredibly proud I'm, of that I'm, young man. I'm, I'm overly excited. Matter of fact, we're leaving to go watch him play his first game at Kansas. And then they come home and play two. I think they have a big shot at that game. I, I do. You? you know, there's there's rumors out there. They might be the first team to ever be favored over a the powerful five team, and that would be awesome to see that. Look, he got to, he's six one, almost two hundred pounds right now. He trained. He's Uncle John. I wear extra large shirts now, so I go out buy him some stuff. But he's a great kid. And, yes, he and, is. And he trains hard. And, great parents. And that that is, and super awesome brother. Taylor Forcade. Yep, no doubt. Coach T. Coach T, great man. All right, now, scrimmages happened today, including one on Wednesday evening, Rommel hosting Cox at Joe Yenny. We'll show you a few highlights from that one, including Chandler Fields to the big tight end down the middle, Carlton Williams. As we show you the highlights, John, you were a highly recruited player in the late 70s. When you look at what's happening in recruiting right now, what bugs you about the whole process? Uh, the way these kids, social media, uh, they're out there, they're broadcasting so much stuff. They, they're they involved in, in too much stuff other than recruiting. I took my six visits. I was in and out. I got to get involved with these coaches. These kids now, they, they, they talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's spread out everything. And then and it's too much personal information out there about these guys. I, my, I was private. I didn't want nobody to know anything about my business, where I was going, what I was doing. These kids committing way before they even played their senior year, uh, talking, and then they decommitting, mm -hmm. and then they just, it's just trouble. Shut up, don't do anything, wait the time to sign, and then sign. What I don't like about it more than anything else, it's diminished the high school game. And to me, when you look back later, if you haven't put enough emphasis on your junior and senior seasons, I think that's yeah. a mistake. I, I totally agree. You know, I, I love my high school time, and I can care less about being recruited. I just want to be with the guys, play football, and when it was all over and done with, then you worry about all that. These guys now, I mean, I remember one, one time I heard somebody, Ed Ogeron, when he was at Ole Miss, he signed a kid from Rumble High School. The kid was only like a, a freshman, a sophomore. I went, what? And then they're doing this, and these guys are signing kids or, or getting commitments way too early. Why? Yep. It's a good question. We won't solve it here tonight. In New Orleans, the past is a big part of understanding the present and the future. And in the early 60s, it was obvious that New Orleans was a city starved for pro football. City Park Stadium, August 1962. The Houston Oilers played the Boston Patriots in a preseason game watched by an overflow crowd of 31,000. According to sports historian Bob Remy, about 7,000 fans were turned away. The Oilers, led by Billy Cannon, the former LSU Tiger, won the game 20 to 10. Houston's George Blanda kicked two field goals and added a pair of extra points. The owners of the two teams, Bud Adams of the Oilers and Billy Sullivan of the Patriots, both agree that New Orleans was ready for pro football. And they were right. Four years and three months later, New Orleans was awarded an NFL franchise. And it's amazing the hold that this town, that football has on this city. It is. And in 1962, when you sent me an email, I thought you were telling me you had something to do with me 56 yeah. years ago. I said, wait a minute, I was only like two years old. What do you mean? You got something on me when I was two? But I did not know that. Football, pro football here. That's amazing. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. Thank you. Please come back. I would love to. We'll see you next week on the WGNO Sports Zone.